Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Yeah. We have come to worship and to praise and to encourage each other for another week. There are many places that you may be this morning, but you choose to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. So let's read these words from Psalm 9, verse 1 and 2 for the start of our worship service. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High God. So if you can, can you stand up so that we will do just that. Amen. Praise God. Praise Thank you. Him.
prayer, which is very important. In our Sunday school this morning, we were talking about devotion to prayer, and I think everyone here prays. Prayer is one thing any religion in the world does. Any religion, even in my hometown, who do, they also pray. And they pray to the Creator. And for us Christians, it's very, very important because our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, right now as we speak, yes. is standing at the right hand of God. Yes, no sitting. He's standing there at the right hand of God, interceding, yes. praying for you and me. Yes. And that is why we pray in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Because He takes our prayers direct to God. And he knows all of them already. Yes. So I ask you come this morning. I don't know what is in your heart, what is in your thoughts, what is making you happy, what is making you sad. Leave all of them here yes. before you. Yes. yes. He can see right now. Yes. He can feel it. Yes. He knows you. Yes. All you have to do is what? Yes. Say I am here. Yes. Leave it before me. Shall we pray together? We are yes. yes. Before our faults, yes. our failures, yes. our hopes, yes. our aspirations, yes. and everything that we have, yes. we come with them to you this morning. Yes. And we pray that ourselves might be acceptable unto you this morning. Because for one thing, we have come here to praise you, to worship you, yes. to thank you, yes. and to encourage each other. As we are here, we are lifting each other before you in prayer. You have already heard all the things that we have in our hearts. So Lord, we just pray that no matter whatever they have, Lord, draw near to us. And stretch your healing hands upon us. Your blessing hands upon us. For every need that we have in our own lives. Lord, we are thankful for everything you have done for us. Yes. Blessings for us throughout the whole week. Yes. Hear 
hear our prayer this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
for what God is doing through all of y'all. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Shared with me 
it's a true story. Um, some years ago, before he went on to be with the Lord, uh, in the month of June, I went by to see him, and we had a good visit, and uh, when I got ready to leave, my dad reached in his pocket, and he gave me $20. Mm -hmm. And so I asked him, I said, I said Dad, what, what's this for? Uh, he said, it's for your birthday. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was thinking at that time, and my dad was probably 82, 83 years old then, I, I was thinking at that time that he was getting me confused with uh, one of my other brothers who had a birthday in June, mine is in July. And so I said to him, I said, Dad, my birthday is July. Maybe you're thinking about Harvey. His birthday is coming up in a couple of days. He said, no, uh, I, I know Harvey's in, is in June. Yours is in July. I said, well, Dad, uh, why don't you just wait in July to get And he said, son, he said, when you find somebody that's already three score years and 10, and they want to give you, go ahead on take because you don't know where they're going to be by the time they get there. So if you want to go ahead and get them, we're going to go ahead and take them. We don't know where you'll be. <laughs>
wallpaper had flowers on the front and had flowers on the <laughs> That was Andre. And um, Miss Benny, bedroom, her bed, she looked just like a queen laying up there. He had it fit so beautiful. He loved us so much. And let me see. <coughs> we got um, to know Andre a little better. That was um, some of us when his mother passed. Andre came and he came, he was here for about a week making arrangements. He worked with my brother, Thomas Patterson, worked with Andre. He and John, brother Bonnie, Johnny Bobby worked with Andre on her arrangements. And my brother said, Andre has blown up my email. <laughs> he has blown up my telephone and work and text. <laughs> this says Andre wants what he wants, when he wanted, how he wanted. <laughs> That was Andre. Andre um, had this pastor from um, Abbasimile Baptist Church he come and do the service. Andre had white roses all over the choir, from one end of the choir stand to the other. They were beautiful roses. I came out here to the cemetery uh, about a week later, and I didn't see the first rose. Our dears ate real good. <laughs> they were beautiful while they lasted. <laughs> and um, we lost contact with Andre. And then we were, oh, back in 2013, Brother Thomas Pass was planning homecoming. And uh, he went to Sister Georgia. And said, Sister Georgia, will you go to Andre and see if he would give us a donation <coughs> for homecoming? Sister Georgia said, I don't know, Jean. You know, Andre is here and there. I don't know whether he'll do that or not. Jean said, go ahead, I'm going to ask him. So he didn't hear anything else. But earlier that week, I think, she contacted him. That Sunday, Georgia said, I have a letter to read. Georgia came up. And she read that beautiful letter from Andre. And then in the letter, there was a check for $25,000. All of our mouths just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> we had never received a contribution like that. And the next few years, Andre sent money to Mount Sinai. And he sent over $100,000.
started all from what? Yeah. Yeah. We might be small, but we are greater than people think. So to bring our 2023 uh, Black Minister, uh, Black uh, History Month to an end, I want to give all of us a challenge. We have heard the story about Anka. We have heard the story about several people that the youth talk about. And Sister Robin talked about somebody else before. And many people say something else, but there is something which has been on my heart I want to talk about. And it's a challenge about beyond Black History Month. Those people that we have been hearing uh, all have done their part and they are gone. What about my part and your part? Yes, yes. Something which is very much needed in our black community. Amen. I mean, black community, not only here in Africa and everywhere you get black people. Because if we don't do that, we get into trouble. And my Beyond Black History Month is about education. Yes. My dad taught me. Two educational things which I hold very well firmly. No wonder I have become an educator. My father said the first education is the education that you get at home. If you don't get home education, you are good for nothing. That is what he told me. And now I can understand. So, how can we encourage mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers to give home education mm -hmm. to our children who are growing up? Mm -hmm. And for we, those who are fathers, mothers, and grandmothers, and grandfathers, mm -hmm. what education are we giving our children? Yes. Yes. Simple thing, how to make a bed, mm -hmm. how to respect other people, yes. how to use a, a good language, how to stay at home and do home a course, a, a chores. Mm -hmm. Is that still relevant in our day? Instead of our children being on the streets, in the guns, mm -hmm. going to places that they should not be, That's shooting right. each other okay. and killing each other, okay. Okay. do we have education for them at home that they can learn something else from us? Okay. The second sort of education that my father said, he said, my father said, oh yeah, I have not been to uh, formal school, I went to night school, but I sent you all 22 children to school. I value education. My father said, I sent you to school so that what? You will learn to become whom you are so that you can interact with the world. And that is what school education is all about. We send our children to school so that they can learn, they can develop a knowledge and everything else, get a job doing, and be what? Useful citizens to society. Amen. Amen. But what do you see today? Yeah. Our children don't want to go to school. Amen. And do we encourage them? Our children go to school as far as to high school, they say, I'm done. And we have people sitting in our what? Washington making uh, rules and laws for us. Yes. How many black people do we have there? Right. <laughs> and how many do we have in our black, uh, our what, state, the, 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 the over here? Why? We need to what? To go above high school, so. to college, so. to whatever we have to go to, so. so that we can become professional and enjoy people and rub shoulders. Yes. And make laws for our country. For our state. Yes. And that is an encouragement which comes from us, parents, grandparents, to do that. Amen. Some time ago, when my children were in River, Riverside High School over there, we go to read books to them. And something broke my heart. 
I got to ask one class what they want to be when they grow up. And this class was predominantly black boys and girls. I didn't hear any answer from them. They are all murmuring around. And one person said, I want to become a barber when I grow up. I said, that is fine. What about the rest of you? I was not able to give any answer. Mm. I cried openly before the class. Mm. Why? Because these are fellow black young people True. who don't have any vision mm. beyond mm. where they are. Mm. And somebody is going to be making laws for them, mm. rules for them, and they don't have any say. Mm. Yeah, because they don't have one. Number three, religious education. And we have been doing a good one over here. Our children in the choir singing, we have our children's teacher over here, have been giving them what? Spiritual education, something which they can walk with God, which will help them have what? Roots. Grandparents, mothers and fathers, encourage your children to yeah, come to amen. Sunday school. Amen. To come sing in the amen. choir. To form the part of the church. Uh, Andrea was a member of this church. Yeah. I just heard that he sat right there in the middle there. Was very quiet. But he imbibed everything he had been taught here. Yeah. And that rested in him. Yeah. He never forgot this church. Yeah. His rules. Yes. And that is what we are talking about. So I leave these three things with you. Home education. Education at school. Whatever level you want to go. And number three. Religious education. I pray that God bless us. As we do these things. challenges and uh, the examples Amen. that have been placed before us. We never know so true. What, what we can become. Yes. We know that we can be like the one who has created us in his image. We're going to have a selection from Fire and then get your seatbelts out. All right. <laughs> late, the late Richard Poe wrote a very beautiful ballad. Said, "Give glory to God, saints. Give glory to God." Second verse: He's worthy of the praises. That's why we give glory to God. Third verse, you'll see this and you can join us. Third verse, he said, lift your hands, saints, and give glory to God.
45 seconds of good old hallelujah praise music. <laughs> says this. Then a new king, somebody say new king. New king. To whom Joseph meant nothing came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, that's the new king. The Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies fighting against us and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor. And they built Pithom and Ramesses as store cities for Pharaoh. Verse 12. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly. Amen. They made their lives bitter with harsh labor in bricks and mortar. Okay. And with all kinds of work in the fields, in all their harsh labor, the Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. Mm. Then if you turn over a few pages further in the book of First Kings, Chapter 17, 1 Kings chapter 17. I want to read verses 2, 3, and 4. 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 2 through 4. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here. Turn eastward. And hide in the Kareth ravine east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. For your people hear it. Amen. For the time that is ours this morning and this afternoon, somebody 
probably gonna get that. <laughs> I want to preach today from the subject. We came from the bottom to here. We came from the bottom to here. When I consider the celebration of black history <coughs> and reflect on the accomplishments of our people, yes. I can declare without a shadow of a doubt or hesitation that the Lord has brought us yes. a mighty long yes. way. Yes. I don't know who to shout. When you think about our storied history and all that we have accomplished against incredible odds, we have to acknowledge that the Lord has brought us yes, yes. from a mighty long way. Yes, yes, and, and how did God bring us? God brought us through many dangers, toils, and snares. The songwriter said it was grace. Yes. That brought us safe this far yes. and grace yes. will lead us on. By, by, by the grace of God, we have been resilient and resourceful, even yes. in the midst of pain and persecution. Yes. Yes. From the majesty of the motherland to the madness and mayhem of the Middle Passage. Testimony that all of us as people of color in this nation that we call America is that we found a way to thrive yeah. from the day we arrived. Y'all right. yeah. just need to tweet that out. We found a way to survive. From the day we arrived. Yes. When you look at the context of this passage in Exodus, where you find a group of people who have been delivered from slavery, yes. Yes. it ought to blow your mind. Uh, can, can I take you to AP history today? Yes. <laughs> The folk in Florida don't want you to learn AP history. That's right. So let me take you to AP history today. Let, let, let me just say, uh, it ain't all in Florida either. That's right. You got some folk in Iran. Yes. That, that are scheming right now to try to model what Florida has done. And the reason is, they know our history, yes. but they don't want us to know our history. But I plan today with God's help and your prayers to take you to school. All right. I said in the context of the text. You find a group of people who have been delivered from slavery. Yes. Right. yes. yes. Very similar to our ancestors who endured hideous treatment oh, unknown yes. to humankind. Yet, yes. Oh, yes. they created a picture and a pattern of survival. Yes. yes. Even in the midst of racism and discrimination. Yes. In the text in Exodus. Everything started out good because these were descendants of Abraham who continued to be blessed through Joseph. 
Amen. Where my Bible reads. Amen. Joseph was the fourth generation. Yes. The son of Jacob. Yes. Who was the son of Isaac. Yes. Who carried the promise of Abraham. Yes. Yes. And by the time you get to the text in Exodus chapter 1. Around about verse 8. The Bible says there arose a new king over Egypt. Yes. Stay with me because I'm going somewhere with this. Right. A new king arose over Egypt. Yes. And the difference between the new king and the previous king is that the new king didn't know anything about Joseph. Yes. And this new king was not concerned about the covenant which had been made with Abraham. You, you, you see, the last king yes. took care of God's people, yes. but this new king didn't care about God's people and anybody named Joseph. And, and so when this new king rose up in chapter 1 of Exodus, he proceeded to take the leadership, but he left the Lord out. He was the leader, but he didn't have the Lord. Preach Kenneth Rahab. I, I, I said this new king took the lead, but he left the Lord out. Can I help somebody? When you leave the Lord out, you ain't going very far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need you to get this. You see that one day Pharaoh looked, Pharaoh looked around. Said to the children of Israel. Or said to Egypt, the, the, the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. They're inventing things. They create new ways to better themselves. Yes. Listen, I, I, I need to impress upon you that we as a people That's right. were not always on the bottom. Amen. You, you just miss your shot. As a people of African descent, yes, yes, yes. you cannot let the history channel All right. and the discovery channel yes. Teach you your history. Yeah. Yeah. Every now and then you got to open a book yeah. for yourself. Yeah. Read G.M. James' Stolen Legacy. Yeah. Read Carter G. Wilson, The Miseducation of the Negro. Yeah. Read James Loin, uh, Lies My Teacher Told Me. Read Nicole Hannah's Jones, the 1619 Project. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when you read your history, you will discover that we did not start out swinging from trees. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We did not start out half naked without the ability to speak good language. Yes, we did not come from a people without intelligence. We were intelligent people. We were created people. The world would not be what it is, and certainly America would not be anything close that she is had it not been for the contributions of our people. Lean in, Le 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 Samson. Let me school you. The pyramids. That's us. Mathematics. Yes. That's us. Yes. The horseshoe. Yes. That's us. Yes. The folding bed. Yes. That's us. Yes. The biscuit cutter. Yes. That's us. Yes. The ironing board. Yes. That's us. Yes. Blood plasma. Yes. That's us. Yes. The printing press. Yes. That's us. Yes. Window cleaners. Yes. That's us. Yes. The pencil sharpener. That's us. The elevator. That's us. The stoplight. That's us. The hair brush. That's us. The heating furnace. That's us. The folding chair. That's us. The baby cat. That's us. Peanut butter. 
That's us. Collard greens. That's us. Chitlins. That's us. Oxtails. That's us. The roller coaster. Sesame Street. Oh, that, 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 that's us. We've not always been at the bottom. Stop letting folk tell you your history. Go to Johannesburg in South Africa. And if you look around, you would think you're in New York City, LA, or Atlanta. But the only African some folk see or know about are the images that are projected on us yes. where we're swinging from trees half naked with a bone in our nose. Yes. That's what the media wants us to see because those images help to satisfy the unwarranted fear of us that they are rationalizing and dehumanizing in us and treating us less than what a human ought to be treated because they can't deal with their own faults. Amen. Then they have to tear us down. Yes. But I need to tell somebody that you can't hold somebody down without being down yourself. Don't get that in a minute. I, I, I believe we would have better self-esteem if we knew where we came from. You knew where you came from and who you really are. You wouldn't be spending money that you don't have. Trying to look up and be like somebody you don't like. If you really knew what Nefertiti looked like. All right. If you really knew what Cleopatra looked like. They didn't look like Elizabeth Taylor and Raquel Welch. These were fine black sisters who knew who they were and whose they were. Preach Kenneth Ray Hammond even if they don't say amen today. And so when our people found themselves enslaved, yes, it was the God of Abraham, yes. the God of Isaac, yes. and the God of Jacob, yes. who sent Moses yes. to lead them out of Egypt yes. into the promised land. Yes. Okay, can I park here long enough to debunk the lie yes. that when our people came from Africa, All right, they had no religion, right. and that once we got here as slaves. The slave owners Christianized us. Listen. We believed in God. And practiced a monotheistic religion. Years before we ever arrived. Here as slaves. The slave owners didn't Christianize us. We Africanized them. sitting there being polite. But when they come to our church, that's right. Yeah. Interestingly, interestingly, they ain't going to talk about how good us preachers preach. They going to talk about how good the choir sing. Y'all ain't like me. Now, 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 to be fair, to be fair, We've got to acknowledge that everybody's fight. Everybody has a fight. Not, not, not just Africans. Everybody has had to endure some persecution. Uh, understand that many of our sisters and brothers from another mother left Europe, left Asia, left their countries, 
because of corruption in the government, yes. they came here with nothing. Amen. They came with the hope of a better day. Yes. Yes. The difference between the motherland yes. and the other lands yes. is that we were taken from our homes yes. and brought here where we were forced to sing, God bless America. Yes. Everybody got a plight. Our Asian and European brothers and That's sisters right. left That's home right. voluntarily to come here. Right. But we were forced to come here. That's right. And so when I say we came from the bottom, I, I, I'm, I'm talking about we came from the bottom once we got here. We weren't on the bottom when we got here. It was after we got here that our American experience yes. put us on, on the bottom. Because when you look back at our roots, yes, we didn't start out on the bottom. That's right. We started out in the image of God. Yes. We started out in the likeness of God. Yes. When I say we started on the bottom, I'm just talking about when we arrived in America. Yes. We were forced to the bottom of society. Yes. We were counted as less Amen. than a human being. Amen. Amen. But how many of y'all know that the same God yes. that did it for Israel oh, yes. is the same God yes. that will do it for us. Yes. The same God that was with Moses and the Israelites yes. is the same God that is able to perform the yes. same miraculous deliverance yes. for us. Now, now, if you keep reading Exodus mm -hmm. and read on into Numbers, yes. you find that God had delivered the Israelites yeah. from the hands of Pharaoh. Y'all yes. Yes. know the story. Yes. Moses lifted up his rod mm -hmm. and God turned the Red Sea to Sinai Circle. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought I thought that might get y'all attention. Yeah. And the Israelites were able to walk through the sea on dry ground. Yes. Dry ground. Yes. Somebody said the dry ground was so dry that they didn't even get mud between their toes. <laughs> look, look, look at God. God fixed it so the Red Sea got dry for the Israelites and got wet to drown Pharaoh's arm. I want to park and preach for a while is the place that we call here. All right. Somebody shout here. Yeah. Yeah. We started from the bottom, yeah. but now yeah. we're here. Yeah. Now, 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 before you get your shout on, right. let me ask you a question. And the question is, where exactly is here? Deep. Do, do me a favor, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Are you here? Are you here? So, so let me ask you another question. And that question is, what have you accomplished? What is it about your surroundings that make you think that you have arrived? Starting from the bottom, tell me exactly where you are. Oh, okay. okay. Let, 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 let me change the narrative. It's time for us to do some self-talk. And so repeat after me, self, self. Tell, me tell me exactly, exactly where, you are. where you are. Is it that you think that you are here because you got two quarters you can jingle now? All right. Is it because you can go to most any school you want to now? 
They used to wouldn't let us go anywhere, but A N C C U A N T P L State, right. Loop City right. State, Winston Salem State, Shaw, and St. Old, John C. Smith, Bennett. But now you can go to Duke, yeah. State, Carolina. Yeah. Does that make you think that you are here? Oh, we've elected a black president, All right. and now because we have a black vice president, does that make you think that you are here? All right. All right. We're headlining the Super Bowl, yes. getting some record deals, Amen. making more money than you ever make. Does that make you think that you are here? All right. We used to be happy. With a Mustang. Amen. But now we drive a Mercedes. Yes. We got Bentley's and Bling. Yes. Maybachs and Mansions. Yes. Is there anything that makes you think that you are here? Do, do you think the material things are a sign that you made it? All right. All right. I, I submit to you that we are nowhere near where we were. But as a people of God, we are far from where we ought to be. Just, just look around at where you are. If I ask you where here is, I'd have to be honest and tell you that for most of us, here is a place of wandering. Oh, we started out from the bottom in this country. Yes. The Lord brought us out from the bottom. And yet when I look at where we should be, it appears that like the children of Israel, yes. we are still wandering. Yes. You know the story. The children of Israel had been delivered from Pharaoh, yes. but they had not reached the promised land. Amen. And the reason they had not reached the promised land mm -hmm. is because for 40 years, 40 years. they were wandering yeah. in the wilderness. Yeah. Now, don't miss this. Don't miss this. I'm schooling you today. They had been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Okay, I hear y'all thinking. I hear you thinking. You're saying... Pastor, I, I, I understand that. I mean, I mean, to get from Egypt to the promised land, you, 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 you want to modernize this thing. You, you, you're saying it, it could have taken them 40 years. Uh, you, 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 you got to recognize, Pastor, that there were a whole lot of Egyptians when they left out on foot. They had no buses <laughs> or cars to transport them. They had to make the journey on foot. Yeah. And besides that, they didn't have a GPS, a map quest right. to direct them, so they probably got lost a few times. Yeah. Now, now, I would buy that argument were it not for the fact that most biblical historians suggest that the journey could have easily have been made in about 40 days. When I was preparing this sermon, I even came across one historian that suggests that it could have been made in a week's time. Seven days. Now, I could accept the fact that they might have gotten lost because they didn't have GPS or map quiz. But I dismissed that possibility because while they didn't have GPS, they did have a pillar cloud by day and a pillar of fire. Y'all didn't hear me. By night. They had GPS. God's protective service. Praise God. And so the question is, why did it take them so long? Bible suggests that the reason it took 40 years, it is, is because they grumbled and complained 
when they should have been trusting God. They, 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 they looked around. Watch this. Watch this. There ain't be no shouting today. They looked around and they were free. They were making their way to the promised land. And as they made their journey to the promised land, what they were seeing in the land did not appeal to them. Y'all remember some giants in the land? Y'all remember that? Yes. They, they out there in a wilderness desert part of time. So, 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 they began to grumble and complain. Sound like some of us, doesn't it? Now, now, it's mighty strange to me how we can say we want better. How we can say we want good things. How we can say we want nice things. But then, when we get those things or head toward those things, we kicking and screaming. Yes. Come on, y'all. Yes. You complain. For example, we don't need to have choir rehearsal every Saturday. We don't need that. We can sing good enough. And then when you come and on Sunday morning you get here and the Lord shows up and you sing it, uh-huh. then you're ready to talk about, look what we did. <laughs> Didn't we really sing today? But yesterday you were grumbling. And Friday you were grumbling and complaining. Some of us will grumble and complain about not having anything to complain about. Y'all know I'm right. When everything goes well, First one talking about, look what we did. Yes. Right. Israelites grumbled and complained. They said to Moses, you brought us out in this wilderness to die. I, I mean, we could have stayed yes. in Egypt. Yes. At least we ate good. Yeah. Pharaoh really wasn't all that bad. Yeah, that's what At least we knew what was going to happen from day to day. Yes. But now Moses, you done brought us out here to die. L- listen, listen. For those of you who are in leadership, let me give you some insight. Whenever you are leading people and you try to bring them out, please understand that you're always going to have some folk who want to stay in. got a vision, God is, is giving you ideas, God is shaping it, it's been, been saturated in prayer, God is honoring it, that things can get better, but you got some complacent folk around you who would rather just stay where they are. I know what the history books told you. I know what BET told you. I know what you heard on Radio 1, but let me help you understand. Everybody is not going to support the movement forward. Just like in the civil rights movement and even before then, everybody didn't support the movement for justice and equality. Everybody ain't going to do it. And, And I'm not talking about them all. I'm talking about some of us all. Everybody didn't support and cheer for Harriet Tubman. They were saying she she ought to chill out. Everybody wasn't waving the flag for Malcolm X. You need to calm down. Matter of fact, some of y'all were probably cheering when he was assassinated. Everybody wasn't applauding Angela Davis. Y'all wanted her to calm down. Have you ever had folk around you who didn't have no fire and got mad 
because you had some and wanted to put your fire. They go around here talking about it don't take all day. They go around here saying, uh, don't let these young folk get in church and get involved. They might want to start something and cause some trouble. Well, they need to cause some trouble. John Lewis said it ought to be some good trouble. Instead of getting people that will cause some good trouble, we go around singing and testifying, just let the Lord fix it. Now, how in the age... On the one hand, let the Lord fix it. And say on the Lord, on the other hand, that the Lord helps those who help me. Oh, y'all. And, 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 and so, and so the Israelites grumbled and complained about the leaders because they didn't want to do better. Amen. And perhaps God's position was how long. Am I going to have to put up with this grumbling and complaining? Moses, tell them that none of them that left Egypt, save a handful, are going to enter the promised land. And by the way, Moses, you ain't even going to enter. I'm going to let you see it, but you ain't even going to enter. Let them wander around yes. for 40 years. I'm going to let them get lost on the way to Walmart. <laughs> Place they all day to find because they stayed out all day. They're going to get lost. It's going to take them 40 years. And the reason is because 40 represents a generation. God in essence said, I'm going to let a whole generation die so that your children will be able to see and possess it, but you ain't going to get there. Listen, listen, listen. I told y'all I'm going to take my time today. Listen, listen. When you complain about what you have or don't have, Sometimes God will step in and decide to take what you do have from you and give it to somebody else. Okay, okay. Somebody ain't feeling me. I, I, I know you think we got it good nowadays. But I'm trying to tell you that we not arrived. When folk are working day and night to take away our voting rights. We ain't arrived. That's right. When people say they are Christians and yet leave Christ out, we ain't arrived. When folk declare themselves to be Christian nationalists, when the reality are they're nothing but racist. We ain't arrived yet. When folk gerrymander political districts to keep them in power and to keep us out, we ain't arrived yet. When we boldly proclaim in the country that no one is above the law. But if you got money, you're not subject to the law. If you can get gunned down for driving while black, you ain't arrived yet. We started from the bottom in this country. But the place that we call here is not where God wants us to be. We shouldn't be wandering around in the same space. What, what, what are we doing? 
we been doing <laughs> since King's death? Okay, right. okay. okay. We elected Obama in 2008. Uh -huh. But what were you doing from 1968 to 2008? All right. I'll tell you what we were doing. We were wandering and playing around. Brothers, if you think the likes of a Mega Evers, a Martin Luther King, a Malcolm X, a Ralph J. Bunch, and an Adam Clayton Power died just so you could have some rims on your car, you done missed the point. Sisters, if you think that Sojourner Truth, Madam C.J. Walker, Barbara Jordan, Shirley Chisholm struggled and died so you can act like a housewife from Atlanta, you done missed the doggone book. If you think that Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram was started so that you can say you got a million followers and you ain't going no deep place yourself, you done missed the book. Probably means you done missed the boat. Yes, sir. All I'm trying to say is, tell you is that we came from the bottom. Yes, and now we're here. Yes. But here is not the place All right. that God wants us to be. No. Here is the place where you're still not considered a full participant. That's right. Here is the place where you can still find that there's an assault on your right. Yes. Here's a place where folk go to church on Sunday yes. and scheme against you on Sunday night. Yes. Here's a place yes, sir. where you get shot because you got some iced tea and skittles yes. in your own neighborhood. Yes. Here's a place where folk can tell you that you can and cannot read certain stuff. Here's a place yes. that's hell bent on keeping you in your place. Yes. Here's a place, Here's a place. where well, they will pay millions of dollars yes, to you to throw a baseball, yes. run a football, dunk a, ba a basketball. Yes. While wow, they're making, when you're making millions, they are making billions. Here's the place where injustice is still going on. Here is the place where racists have traded robes and hoods for suits and briefcases. And you've got the unmitigated gall to celebrate the fact that you are here. I need to sell, tell somebody that here ain't where you need to be. Laws that protect Crooked politicians. Yes, sir. I hear. Yeah. Laws that are designed to make it harder for you to vote. Yeah. I hear. Yeah. A government that will send you into war yeah. but won't take care of you when you get back. Yeah. I hear. Yeah. You want to know where here is? Yes. Here's a place where girls struggle to find their place. Yeah. And know their worth. Yeah. Here is a place where brothers still struggle to find their identity. Yeah. Here is a place where they will put you out of church uh -huh. if you are gay or yeah. lesbian, yeah. but won't say a word about the fornicators and adulterers that yeah. sit up in the church. Yeah. Here is the place. I know y'all don't like me. I don't know who cares. Here is a place. Well, you have two justice systems. Yes, one for the folk of means and with means, and one for everybody else. Here is a place yes. we didn't acknowledge a drug problem All right. until our Euro brothers and sisters started dying from opioids. Yes, right. Here is a place yes. where environmental concerns weren't being raised as long as toxic dumps yes. were being built in our community. Here is a place 
Well, we used to come to church to praise God. But now we come to be entertained. Here is a place where we started at the bottom in this country. And now many of us are satisfied just to be here. But my question is, is here really where God wants us to be? Don't y'all look at me funny and say you don't took too much time. I told y'all last time. I didn't give y'all the 10 minutes last week. I told y'all I'm you my time today. The Israelites wandered around for 40 years. Complaining about the blessings. Y'all missed it. That God had given them. They had come out of Egypt. They had come out of slavery. And now they were just happy. To be here. We elected a black president here. We own a few businesses here, which we had support, by the way. We made some progress here. But the question for us, as I get ready to go to my seat, somebody said, that's what I've been listening for. The question is, is here where God really wants us to be? Yeah. There's something in my spirit yes. that tells me yes. that we ought not get comfortable yes. here. Amen. Amen. You see, there are forces at work in our society yes. which are trying to convince us yes. to be satisfied yes. here. Amen. They say to us, you started on the bottom, but now you're here. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I thank God that God has allowed me to get here. But forgive me for not being a bit suspicious when folk who try to keep me at the bottom are now celebrating the fact that I'm here. Yes, yes I appreciate it. Yes, I'm thankful for you. Yes, he is better than at the bottom. But when I began to get comfortable here, the Holy Spirit reminds me that the Lord never intended for here to be my last thought. I believe the people of color, we ought to be grateful for coming from the bottom to here. But the reality is that our hope ain't based here. You ready for the shout? Yes, sir. Are you ready for the shout? I don't know if y'all can handle it. Y'all ready for the shout? Yes. I said the reality of our hope is not based here. Amen. For you see, God doesn't want us to stay here. God wants us to come there. Yes. And the only way to make it from here to there is to stop wondering and start working. As I go to my seat, anybody got a testimony? Lord, I thank you for bringing from, from the bottom here. But the Lord, I thank you even more for reminding me that here is not my final destination. Lord, you desire for me not to stay here, but to go there. Am I preaching to anybody who wants to go there? Well, if you want to go there, you got to leave here. And before you answer as to whether you want to go there, let me tell you right. where there is. Right. Is that all right? Yes. If you read 1 Kings chapter 17, yes. verses 2 through 4, you find out where there is. Right. The word of the Lord yes. came unto Elijah right. and said, Arise, right. get thee away from yes. here. And turn eastward. Yes. 
and hide behind the brook at Sharif. For there I have commanded the ravens to feed you. To feed you. of separation. If you want to get there, you got to do like Elijah and separate from your surroundings. But not only is there a place of separation, but there is a place of deviation. When you get there, you will discover that the Lord has a way from the north. Elijah found out that when he got there, the Lord had charged buzzers to be his meal source. The Lord changed buzzers who are wanderers into waiters. There is a place of separation. There is a place of deviation. But then there is a place of consummation. You see, when Elijah got there, he found no crops growing. When Elijah got there, he found no wheat growing. No wheat no bread, no plants, no collars, no cattle, no steak, no chicken, no wing. But there, there, the Lord provided for him to consume. The Lord commanded the ravens to nourish him. Paul's there 
I'm happy. All today. We came from the bottom to here. But the Lord is saying, come there. As the choir prepares to sing, that may be somebody. Maybe you're celebrating the fact that you're here. Thank God for here. But understand that here ain't your final destination. You ain't got no deed here. But the Lord says, I will prepare a place for you that's got many rooms. That where I am, watch this, there. You shall be also. Let's stand together. The invitation to Christian discipleship. You're watching us. He brought us. He brought us. He brought us. Rest in the Bible each of us, now and henceforth, and forever. 